We're about to head out and start to explore the RNL region of the country. And one of the hallmark things that's there is a big volcano. And of course, you need to plan accordingly because it's not just going to be one type of shot. There's going to be things like waterfalls here, rainforest, low light shooting, a wide range of subjects. And in order to properly capture this, I need a wide range of coverage. Of course, I don't want to lug around a bunch of gear. So I'm designing my shooting around the idea that everything is going to fit inside of one little tiny bag. The tripod's going to fit in here. The camera's going to fit in here. All that gear is inside here to make it easy. So let's go through that process. Why such a small bag? Well, this is going to be nice because we're going to be exploring and hiking and I've got my kids with me on this trip. I can't be lugging a bunch of equipment. I need to be able to have two hands free because I've got two kids in case it's my job to make sure that they're safe or keeping things busy. And as we're hiking around, there's going to be times that I'm going to need both hands. So I don't need a lot of equipment. So we're going to pack light. On that front, let's start with a tripod. Even though it's tempting to have no tripod, I still want something with me for support. So here I have a really small one from a company called Me Photo. There's lots in this spec space though. You'll notice here how easy it is to flip those legs up. There we go. And just position that a little bit. And what we've got is a very small tripod. Look at that. Really lightweight, aluminum, piece of cake. I could just drop that in the bag. Next, I'm going to plan for the unexpected. I'm going to bring two camera bodies. I realize some of you might see this as a luxury, but think of it more as an insurance policy. Trust me, the amount of money I'm spending coming down here on vacation and the amount of preparation I put into it, the last thing I want to have is a broken camera or a stolen camera or a malfunctioning camera because of something like high humidity or it gets wet. By having a spare body, I've got that safety. Plus, in the meantime, it's going to give me some extra flexibility. Because I've got two bodies here, I can attach two lenses. Instead of having to do a lens change out in the middle of the field and getting dust in on the sensor, I'm going to have that option. So I've got one body here, and for this smaller body, I'm going to keep it wide. Right now, I've got a 15 millimeter lens on there. I'm going to probably end up using this guy here. It's one of my favorites. It's a 12 millimeter lens. Remember, with the Micro Four Third system, that basically behaves like a 24. What I like about this lens is it actually has a great physical manual focus ring. And because we're going to be shooting in rainforest, there's going to be times when autofocus is tough. For example, I know there's some great spiders out there and focusing on a spider web, autofocus isn't going to work. It's going to keep focusing on the object behind the web, not the spider's web. Plus, there's going to be times that you just want to dial that focus in, maybe creatively or to get the focus that you need and you don't want to sit there fighting with autofocus. So I like having that control. So we've got this here. I'll just drop it in the bag as well. One body goes in. Take my second body, put that in. So far, so good. I like heavy duty straps. Now, there's lots of straps out there. This is one of my favorites from a company called Vulture. It's actually parachute material. These are professional grade carabiners. I could literally hang my weight from this and that's plenty and that's going to be a good strong support and this strap is designed to hold thousands of pounds of pressure. Now that's probably overkill for the size cameras that I have but it's a nice wide strap and it's super convenient. That's what I'm getting at here. You're going to be walking around in hot sweaty environments. It's going to get sticky. Having a comfortable camera strap that's not going to give you friction, that's going to be solid across the body and feel really sturdy is going to be important because I've seen people get overheated or uncomfortable with their straps and they take them off and that's a recipe for disaster with damaged equipment. All right, let's finish out what we have here. I'm going to toss it in because it's lightweight. It's nice and simple. It's a 30 millimeter lens. It's going to behave like a 60. I'll use a lens like this for portraits. It may just stay in my bag, but it's going to give me that flexibility. Because we're shooting the mountains, that 12 millimeter lens is going to be great. I want landscapes. Remember, on a Micro Four Thirds system, 12 millimeters is like a 24. Maybe you have a 35 millimeter lens, a 28 millimeter lens. Anything in that realm is going to be great. You want the ability to shoot wide. There's great, beautiful vistas with mountain ranges and the forest. And having those shots wide really gives you a sense of magnitude. Now, those are both going to fit in my bag here. And I got one more lens and a couple more pieces of gear. This one, 
is something that makes me super happy. It's a 75 to 300 millimeter lens. And it's one of the things I love about the Micro Four Thirds system. Because remember, with that doubling factor, this behaves like a 600 millimeter. There's gonna be some great animals out here in Costa Rica, chances to see things that I could never see back home. And I wanna get close. I wanna be able to see the feathers on that bird. By shooting off of a tripod using a long lens here, this is gonna work great. Now, a DSLR style system, 600 millimeter lens, that's gonna be that big. Maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but it's certainly gonna be a lot heavier and a lot bulkier. This is small enough, collapse that down, easily fits right inside the bag and you're in great shape. Now, what's left? Well, throughout this course, because we're doing some behind the scenes and showing you how the pictures were made, I've got a GoPro. I've gone ahead and put it into one of the frame mounts that GoPro offers, and I've got just a hot shoe mount here at the bottom. This is gonna allow me to attach that on the top of the camera and let you see how some of these pictures were made. Now, I can't emphasize enough having spare batteries. I got spare batteries for my OMD, spare batteries for my GoPro. This bag has a pocket right on the back here. It makes it really easy to drop those in. As I use those batteries up, I can go ahead and put them in another pocket so I don't intermix the good batteries with the discharge batteries. But look, everything's in that single kit. The tripod is in there, the two camera bodies, everything. And if I go out hiking or walking around, I look just like a normal tourist. But when I'm ready to shoot, I've got everything I need right over my shoulder. And while this is a good 15 pounds, I can walk with that for the day. It's not gonna kill my back and I got all the flexibility. I can go from 12 millimeters all the way out to 600 millimeters in a small compact bag. And that's one of the things I love about these mirrorless camera systems.